Did somebody say a new truck who it is? Yeah, it was me. I said it. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Donation Off-Road. So today we're back with another rendition of Mastering the Tacoma. And today we're talking gears, baby. Damn, I dropped that too hard. Now, for those of you who watch the channel, you you know, you know see it in every single trail video. We talk about it a little bit too much, me specifically. We recently re-geared our 2017 Tacoma to 529 gears, as well as installed a ARB front locker. Now, if you haven't seen that install video, I'll link it below so you guys can check it out and come back or check this out and check that out afterwards. Whatever you want, do, what you, do your thing. Now, for this video, we're gonna go over some positives as well as some negatives of daily driving and off-roading with a re-gear, and then we'll go over some tips and advice for re-gears and then we'll close the video after that then look forward to future videos where we'll be talking about the front locker that we installed and i'll give my opinion on that review and yada 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 stay tuned first off i'm going to give you my best explanation of gear ratios so you can better understand the terminology and the ideas explained in this video now let me say first i am not a pro so don't take this as pro advice. This is this is stuff that I've researched and learned on the internet and working on this stuff. But I'm going to give you my best explanation so that you guys can at least be up to level with, with my smooth brainness. The gear ratio refers to the amount of times that the drive line, or in our case, drive shafts, spin in order to turn the wheel one time. So if somebody were to say that they have 410 gears, that means their drive shaft turns 4.1 times for every single time that their wheel turns. Typically a lower number will give you a higher top speed and better gas mileage, and then a higher number is going to give you better torque on the low end as well as higher towing capacity. There's a trade-off for both. This is super important for off-road vehicles because putting bigger tires and lifting your vehicle super high almost always results in a power loss, which is why you'll see people re-gearing to a lower gear ratio. And by the way, lower gear ratio, I'm referring to a higher number. So for example, 529s is lower gears than 3.9 gears. It's reversed and it sounds weird, but that's how it is. Lower gears, higher number, higher gears, lower number. Most people that go with a re-gear on their off-road vehicle will choose a lower gear because that does give you more torque and acceleration, but it does cost some gas mileage as well as top speed. In my case, I went from stock 3.91 gearing, I think that's what the stock Tacoma gearing is, all the way to 529s, which yes, that sounds like a big jump, but there's something that you have to understand and any third gen Tacoma owner out there can back me up on this. These things are geared incorrectly from the factory. Yeah, the engine has 280 horsepower or whatever it is, 275. You don't feel it, and you definitely can't use it right away because they gear them for better gas mileage and, and longer drives and stuff like that. They're not geared to be off-road vehicles. So you gotta fix them from the start and then when you do fix them, we typically overdo it because we're putting bigger tires on the vehicle. These Tacomas have garbage acceleration and when you go and throw 33s or 35s on there, it makes the vehicle almost undrivable. Getting into the positives and negatives of daily driving with 529s, first off, there was a previous comment on a video where this guy said, the first drive after re-gear is better than sex. And honestly, that's pretty accurate. This is a whole new truck with these gears, fixing a long time issue we've had with Tacomas. You press the gas and it accelerates. You don't have to, you know, you can floor it and it'll drop the gear correctly. It doesn't hunt around. It doesn't do all this other stuff that, that these freaking transmissions do sometimes. It feels and drives like a vehicle should right out of the factory. Now with those positives, there's definitely a good amount of negatives to talk about. These gears are low and it affects daily driving. First off, there's a big difference in how this truck shifts. I found that it really wants to shift early, which in some cases, if you're just driving around town, you can be in fifth gear at 35 miles an hour, which is pretty crazy. It's not that bad because obviously being in a higher gear means you're getting better gas mileage, but it doesn't always work that way because driving around town, I get horrible gas mileage, usually between 11 and 12. On another hand, on the highway, you can get a little bit better gas mileage, but we'll talk about that in a second. Highway, your top speed is definitely limited. Now, speaking of speed, when I did the re-gear, I didn't recalibrate my speedometer. So results may vary. If you calibrate that, it might be a little bit more accurate. 
I didn't. I'm just giving you the information and experience as I've got them. So just keep that in mind. If you calibrate yours, it'll probably be a little bit different. On the highway, I found that six gear, 2000 RPM gives me about 65, 70 miles an hour, as opposed to stock gearing with 35s. I never even touched six gear. You had to go like 100 miles in order to get into six gear. Like it would shift at fourth and then it would stay in fourth all the way to fifth, which is at like 80 miles an hour and then if you wanted to go six gear you literally had to be going downhill and that's the only way i could reach six gear it was it was weird it was so thrown off by 35s and the crappy gearing that it, it really it, it was wonky anyways it gives you you know 2000 rpm six gear 65 to 70 miles an hour you can push it to 80 maybe even 85 but you're gonna feel like you're pushing the truck a lot because i i did i did a good test of it i was uh doing a hashtag race with a stock tacoma and i made it up to 85 and i felt like the truck was starting to struggle a little bit like hey don't don't push me anymore it's a little too much there typically the truck wants to stay in six gear at around 60 to 65 miles an hour and honestly that's your best shot at good gas mileage anyways because long trips at that speed will give me about 18 miles per gallon which is about stock stock truck i was getting 17 to 18 so that's not bad at all but you really have to work with this truck to get that good at gas mileage so you know otherwise the gas mileage is crap it, it, it's like there's no in the middle anymore i'm either getting really really bad gas mileage 11 12 maybe 13 or I can get 18 or 19. The in-betweens, they don't really exist. That said, cruising on the highway isn't that bad at all with the re-gear. There's virtually no struggle going up hills. I can go up a hill in fifth gear, sometimes sixth gear, and I don't drop power, I don't lose a ton of power. You know, because keep in mind, fifth and sixth are overdrive gears, right? They're not meant to accelerate, they're meant to maintain your speed. And going uphill, I can maintain my speeds in fifth and sixth gear, sometimes having to drop down to fourth if I'm like driving up to Gorman where it's like a, a steeper hill, as opposed to before, I would always be in fourth trying to accelerate up a hill. And then sometimes I'd have to be in third with a high rev in order to maintain like 70 miles an hour. It, it really struggled before and now it virtually never struggles. Overall, when it comes to daily driving, I would say 529s makes for a much better driving experience. But if you're not careful, it can be a more expensive driving experience because of that bad gas mileage um you know maybe that's something i haven't figured out yet you know i've added in addition to the tires and lockers and everything i put on bed racks i put on new bumpers i put on a winch so there's a lot to consider when it comes to gas mileage i found my gas mileage progressively dropping as i make upgrades to the truck but since i got the re-gear i have found moments where i can get really really good gas mileage for what the truck is it's like I said, you just have to work for it and you have to drive a certain way for a certain amount of time to even get there. Now for the important part, off-roading with 529s. Same as I mentioned with daily driving, a re-gear completely changes how this truck feels and drives. When you take a truck or Jeep or any other Tacoma or anything like that, when you take your vehicle, throw huge tires on it, and then you go wheeling, you're gonna feel the power loss in most situations. The best example I can give of this is a recent Patreon run that we had at Roller Flats. It was right before we installed the gears on the truck. I was climbing a decent sized hill. It was rutted out, had some loose rocks and sand. Well, not sand, but loose dirt. And it was pretty steep. The truck had stock gearing. 35s i was in four low first gear and honestly i ran out of power climbing that hill only time that i've actually like ran out of legit power to where like i couldn't get the vehicle to push forward or even spin its tires consistently at one point i was flooring it and i couldn't even climb anymore because i didn't have enough low end torque because of how steep it was with 529s i wouldn't have that kind of problem maybe it would have been a problem of traction or whatever but i wouldn't have the, the problem of hey i don't have enough power to go up this hill usually it's hey i don't have enough traction to go up this hill and that situation i didn't have the power since the re-gear i'm climbing hills a lot smoother 1500 rpm 2000 rpm let's get it i'm i'm cruising up some of these hills and when i need the power i can punch it and the power's there it's available for the taking i don't have to worry about am i going to run out of power on a hill it's it's there and it's good to go rock crawling it's the same thing i can ease on the gas because rock crawling right it's it's a game of traction and, and low end torque and with that extra low end torque 
you can spin your tires slowly, crawl up a rock, come back down. You don't have to spin your tire a bunch of times. You don't have to bump it. You don't have to, you know, slide everywhere because you're you're trying to trying to gas it through an obstacle. You can use your vehicle's gearing to slowly crawl up something, crawl back down, and then keep going through the trail. The only negative that I would say with a re-gear is you have to get used to that difference in power. You know, you press the gas and now it jumps and it goes right away. There's not a delay, there's not a lag, there's not a brrrr, then the tires spin. It kind of, they, they already do their thing right away because all your power is now at the low end. So you have to get used to it first. I could easily see a situation where somebody gets a re-gear, breaks in their gears, goes out there, and then they can mess something up because we all know you don't break parts with horsepower, you break parts with torque. So when you have a bunch of low end torque and you're gassing it up something and you lift the tire and it comes back down, snap, there goes the axle or whatever you want to call it. Get used to your vehicle after you re-gear it because it feels different. You're gonna drive, you're gonna drive it like it's your old vehicle even though it's this new re-geared one. So take the time, get used to how it feels, get used to how it feels in four low, and then once you're out on the trail, you're gonna be more prepared and ready to go. Some other things that I've noticed with the re-gear is I don't have to rely on four low as often in situations where I need four wheel drive because before, Honestly, if I shifted to four wheel drive, I might as well shift to four low because it was just easier to drive. Four low gave me better power delivery and all that stuff. Now I can just shift to four high and I have enough power and enough gearing to, you know, crawl small obstacles, something where that, you know, it'll require four wheel drive. Now, speaking of four low, there's some things to talk about. Four low, first gear, 529s is some very, very low gearing. Just, just watch this clip of me doing all that and letting the truck go do its thing. Say bye to the truck. <laughs> this, this, this taco belongs to the trails now. <laughs> That's my baby, bye. If you follow us on Instagram, you've probably already seen me do this before. I honestly got a little carried away with doing this when I first got the truck back from the re-gear um, cause I was pretty impressed by, by how slow it actually crawls so I can get out of the vehicle and walk around it and you know, do all this other stuff and it just it won't run away from me. It's, it's really slow and it crawls like, a, it's like a turtle, turtle gang. I found that the max speed with first gear in four low is around eight to 10 miles an hour max. And then if you shift it all the way to fourth and continue driving, you can maybe get it up to 30 or 35. That's about it. With stock gearing, I can maybe get the truck up to like 50 miles an hour in, in fourth gear because you can't shift the fifth and sixth in four low, in case you guys didn't know. Um, that was about it. It can go about 50, maybe 55, but now 30, 35 is the absolute max in four low with the 529s. The other thing I wanted to mention with four low is braking. Now, 529s, it makes engine braking a thing. It makes it useful on this truck. I can put the truck in four low, start to go down a hill and I don't even have to press the brake. I mean, obviously you wanna be prepared in case something goes wrong, but in most cases you don't even have to press the brake because it's gonna crawl down slowly and it's gonna control it for you. This is super important if you're out on the trail and you have an issue with your brakes. We had a previous trip where we went to Pilot Rock Truck Trail, 2N17X, I ended up breaking a brake cylinder on the rear drum to where I lost all four brakes and Although I, I had stock gearing at the time in 33s and I did do the whole engine braking stuff, I still had to have a power wagon strapped to me because going down the hill, it didn't slow me down enough. I was speeding down these hills in first gear to where it was a little bit dangerous. So with 529s, I probably wouldn't have had that issue. I could have driven the trail, driven the truck out of the trail on my own. Stay tuned for a future video. We'll cover engine braking a little bit more. I'm planning a manual shifting versus automatic shifting type video for mastering the Tacoma. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be coming in the next week or so. Also need to mention, if your brake pads are a little worn out or if you're only pressing the gas a little bit, four low can power through your brakes, even if you're just idling downhill. It's, it's a little bit harder to stop because you have that extra low end power it's no joke. That pretty much sums up the off-roading part of it. 
I found nothing but benefits since re-gearing this truck and I'm actually really happy with it. Now for the rest of you out there that are looking to re-gear, what should you get? Now remember, I'm talking to you as a Toyota truck owner. My experience is always gonna be different than everybody else's. I'm just giving you the info based off this truck and this piece of junk sitting right here. With the Tacoma, I think I made the absolute best decision. I primarily rock crawl, I do hill climbs. A lot of the stuff I do requires low end power and I'm doing it slow. I don't pre-run, I don't do all that other stuff. I wanted to get the lowest gears available for this truck. That's best for 35s or even maybe 37s. Shh, might happen. For anybody like myself that off-roads often and you off-road the same way we do, you rock crawl, you hill climb, do all that stuff, and you're gonna run big tires on your vehicle, I would consider getting 529s. But if you're really concerned about the daily driving aspect of it, but you still wanna run big tires and have more capabilities off-road, then I would look at like 456 or 488s. Winters over here runs 488s and that works just fine. It's a four-speed transmission, but the truck can still run 35s, have capabilities off-road, and I can go 70 on the highway. That works for me. You're gonna have to find what works for you. And the only suggestion that I would make concerning that is consider your goals and re-gear for the future. If you know you're gonna run 35s on your build, then re-gear for 35s now. This is the kind of upgrade that you only wanna do one time. That's pretty much all I got for the video. I'll conclude by saying this re-gear is by far my favorite upgrade on this Tacoma. It's a lot of work and it can be very pricey, but it's 100% worth it because it actually improves performance. It's not flashy. It's not bumpers, it's not lights, it's not big wheels and tires, it's not, it's not the sexy upgrade, but what it is, is the one that's probably gonna help your rig the most. So that's it, I'm all done here. Um, if you guys have any questions about regearing or any comments about your, you know, your experience with regearing, we'd love to hear them, as well as if you have any suggestions on mastering the Tacoma topics, I'd love to hear them down below so we can try and get them covered in the future. We're all done for now. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to channels, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. You can also hit us up for shirts and hats at dirtnationoffroad at gmail.com. But thank you guys. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>